On this episode of UTR, we're back in Ann Arbor to take some classic classes, soar with superheroes, and dine at a gem of a restaurant. And in the middle of it all, we'll have some coffee that's changing the world one cup at a time. Get ready to explore the cool people, places, and things that make the entire Ann Arbor area awesome. A visit to the Stalls Auto Collection will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. A fantastic assortment of gas pumps, neon signs, and automated music machines dating back 150 years that must be seen and heard. Info at stallsauto.com. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar, Michigan. You know, year after year after year, the Ann Arbor area is continually named one of the greatest places in the world to live, work, play, own a business, raise a family, and even film a TV show. So if you'll excuse me, that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. Yep, Ann Arbor and its surrounding communities are chock full of enlightened, educated people, amazing restaurants, cool, funky shops, diverse culture, history, tradition, sports, and tons of natural beauty. There's so much to eat, see, do, and experience here that if you're not careful, you just might pack up and move the whole fam family here. There's also the added intellectual uplift of the University of Michigan and Eastern Michigan University. They give the region an excitement all its own by producing passionate people full of energy and ideas. Now, if for some reason the whereabouts of the Ann Arbor area has until this time eluded you, I shall elucidate its location immediately. Ann Arbor and its super cool colony of close communities are located in southeast lower Michigan, about 30 minutes due west of Detroit. You ever get tired of saying they just don't make things the way they used to? We'll get ready for a retro rewind because we're about to go serious old school on you. That's right. Here at the Michigan Folk School, you can take classic classes in everything from bread baking and cheese making to blacksmithing, woodworking, gardening, and even dressmaking. It's a nonprofit campus that creates community by teaching time-tested techniques that'll enrich your life. Yep, you can learn crafts that have been carried on for generations because these are the skills that helped us become who we are. Oh, and they can also come in pretty handy too, pun intended. Now the first class I decided to take was one in how this all happened. So I went back in time with Jason and Julia Gold. You guys, I am so, I don't know, what to, imp impressed, blown away. I thought this would be, you know, a, a folk school. I thought it'd be like a little shed out in the, in the, I mean, we are out in a beautiful pasture. This place is state of the art. I want to start taking classes here yesterday. <laughs> the amount of stuff that you guys teach here, I mean, just ramble through some of them. Well, we teach the cooking classes for sitting in the kitchen, so. We I can do... use a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, so we do lots of cooking, um, but then also moving into fermentation and cheese making. Um, and then herbalism into the gardens. Um, we do natural dyes, uh, and then also woodworking and leather work and blacksmithing. Oh, you can like this, you can make making. Yeah, learn to make a hat here. Learn to make shoes here. Learn to make a dress here. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. These are all skills that to know this stuff would it would come in kind of handy. It would. It definitely would. This uh, the folk school movement began about 150 years ago in Northern Europe. There was a, a real fear of the Industrial Revolution taking over and us forgetting knowledge, the people's knowledge. So there was a movement to call the Folkenschule to try to somehow or another retain the people's knowledge. And it went all over the world. And so there's folk schools from here to China and everywhere. We got about 150 of them in this country alone. Wow. Well, I mean, you guys started this together. So it's, it's obviously a labor of love. Um, what's the most rewarding thing for you guys doing this? 
Well, it really does feel like we're, we're preserving something for those of us that forgot to listen to our grandparents. And now that we want to know things, it's like we're like the surrogate grandparents. And we're preserving knowledge that could otherwise be lost to antiquity. But then also, if there's valuable wisdom in the past that could push us forward and allow us to use that wisdom in conjunction with the technology of now and into the future. You know, speaking of technology now, I mean, oh, oh, I forgot. Don't go anywhere. I brought something for you guys. Hold on. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Okay, cut. I'm back. Um, we On the show, we featured a gentleman named uh, John Wilson yes. a couple years mm -hmm. ago. S the sweetest man. And oh, he taught us on the show, he taught me how to make a shaker box. And I made this shaker box with my own two hands. It's something I created with him um, that I'll never forget. I didn't, or, I didn't order it on Amazon. I didn't go to a store and buy it. I bent the wood, made this with my own two hands. And I, it's, it's a, I, I put keepsakes in here. I took them out because they make noise. Sure. But yeah, it, this, uh, this, it just means so much to me that I did this. It's something tactical and that you made yourself. Yeah, so I mean. Well, that's the piece. Like, John passed away this last year. Yeah. And, but because of what he did, he passed on this knowledge to so many people, yourself included. We teach uh, shaker box making here, and it's because of John I taught and learned from John. Oh, really? So, I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this, yeah. I, I, ch I cherish this thing uh, because of the time I spent with him and it's something he taught me to do and that now I know how to do. In this day and age, like I said, where it's all screen time, computers, cell phones, we're being bombarded 24-7 with bad news. To be able to come here and do something that means something that that's useful, how did you make this all happen? This place is fantastic, but this couldn't have been easy. No, uh, it's always uh, cre community created. I mean, as, as we are crafting you know, school, we crafted this school from, uh, from, from nothing. Um, when Jewel and I started the folk school, it's not like we said, oh, let's start a folk school. It just happened. We did a chicken processing class. Then we did a beekeeping class and we had a folk school. And we named it Michigan Folk School because when you abbreviate Michigan and sound it out, it sounds like my folk school and that becomes a possessive. And we wanted people to also um, feel like they had an ownership of this school because it is a nonprofit. What a brilliant and timeless idea this school is. It's a place the entire community can come to to learn, grow, connect, and actually make something with their very own hands. I would have made something, but heck, I'm still trying to figure out how to make a good TV show. Honestly, if you're tired of staring into the endless internet for entertainment, step away from your computer, back in time, and learn a skill or a craft at the Michigan Folk School in Ann Arbor. That way, next time your internet goes down, you'll have something worthwhile to do. Bonus. You know, don't you sometimes wish you could change the world? Well, here at Biddy and Bose, they're doing it one cup at a time. Mmm. Now, when it comes to making the world a better place, this is a place you really need to know because they hire and help special needs people find a meaningful place and pursuit in their community. Yep, when you get a delicious cup of joe at Biddy and Bo's, it's handed to you by someone whose smiling face may not look like yours, but when you boil it all down, they have pretty much the same needs, wants, and deserve the same respect as anyone else trying to make their way in this crazy world. So to find out more, I arranged for a super special message from the kind and caring creator herself, Amy Wright. Hi, my name is Amy Wright and I'm the co-founder of Biddy and Bo's Coffee. The inspiration behind Biddy and Bo's Coffee is our two youngest children, Biddy and Bo, who both have Down syndrome. And as the parents of children with disabilities, when we learned that 80% of people in our country don't have jobs, we didn't want our kids growing up in a world like that. The reason we do what we do is because we believe people with disabilities need to be valued just like everybody else in the world. And what we noticed was when people would come into our coffee shops and spend time with our employees who have disabilities, they started to see them differently. 
And while we can't open enough coffee shops to absorb the number of people with disabilities that need jobs in our country, what we can do is continue to demonstrate what's possible when you give someone with a disability a chance. And so every guest that comes through our door is greeted with a warm welcome to Biddy and Bo's coffee. They might sit at our counter and visit with our employees or have that moment when they pick up their order where they have a, a short conversation with one of our employees and they start to see them differently. And when you see people differently, you can't unsee that. You go back into your place of work or your school or your social setting and you start to try to include people with disabilities in your life more. So we really feel like our shops are these portals where people can come in, experience what it's like to spend time with people with disabilities, and that's when culture really shifts. We hope that people all over the state of Michigan will decide to make a road trip and come to Ann Arbor, bring the whole family, and come spend the day at Biddy and Bo's Coffee. You won't regret it. You'll think it's the best thing ever. And we hope you'll tell all your family and friends to come visit us too. Yep, Amy Wright started Biddy and Bo's for all the right reasons. And speaking of reasons, here's just some of the reasons why Biddy and Bo's baristas love their jobs. So first of all, what's your name? My name is Maria. Oh, very pretty name. Oh, thank you. Um, so what's your favorite part about working at Biddy and Bose? My favorite part of working at Biddy and Bose is working with my crew and see what the learning experience is in the coffee shop. So what do you love about working at Bo uh, Biddy and Bose? I love working here because uh, I like the customers and the workers here. So tell me about the map on the back wall of all the different places. Um, it's like it maps like of like Biddy and Bo's, like where it's at. And where all the people around the world who have been here. It's incredible. People have been here from every continent. That shows you how special you guys are. Yeah. Well, what's your favorite part, the customers or the coffee? Well, I like everything about being in because I come here every day. But, and also, you guys actually take the time to write special notes to people for mm -hmm. their coffees. Why do, you, why, why do you do that? So people can feel welcome to you and blessed to be here. Why do you think it's so important that Biddy and Bo's is here? It's important to make an impact on the environmental and disabilities in all kinds of people like me. You are wonderful. Thank you. At Biddy and Bo's, coffee is the compelling caffeinated conduit that brings people in. But once inside, you suddenly and delightfully realize that as different as we all might be, at our hearts, we're all the same. So next time you're anywhere near downtown Ann Arbor and you're looking for a good place to go to get a great cup of joe, all you need to know is Biddy and Bose. Oh, and don't forget to bring your smile. Now, if you're looking for your favorite superhero, you came to the right place. But uh, I'm not talking about me. If I'm your superhero, you need a hobby. <laughs> oh, like the cape though? Mm. And speaking of hobbies, here's one that'll spark your imagination from here to a galaxy far, far away. That's right, I'm talking about comic books. And one of the greatest places to meld your mind with this magnificent medium is the Vault of Midnight right here in downtown Ann Arbor. This is a classic comic book store and a whole lot more. And the more time you spend here, well, the more time you'll spend here. So to find out how this fantastic find of fun and fantasy got founded, I hung up my superhero cape, remember Edna says no capes, and conversed with awesome owner Curtis Sullivan. First of all, the name. Oh my yeah. gosh, Vault of Midnight. That's a mouthful, right? Oh, yeah. I, was, I was talking to my daughter last yeah. night and I told her yeah. where, we're, I said, she won't know this place. I said, where we're going to the Vault of Midnight. She's like, oh my God. She lives in Detroit. <laughs> right on. Loves your location there. Where'd the name come from? Uh, it's a uh, amalgam of a few things. So we liked EC Comics in the 50s, like Vault of Horror, Crypt of Fear. 
you know, weird science fantasy, all those those comics from the 50s. Yeah. And uh, and then Captain Midnight was a, a character that, I just always loved the name Captain Midnight. Also an old character from like the 30s. Ah. Um, and so it's sort of a, a blending. And then Vault implies we have lots of cool stuff inside maybe. So, yeah, yeah. Boy, that's quite an explanation, but it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a mouthful. When people ask, uh, you know, what kind of place we are, they think we're gonna be scary because the name maybe is a little intense. But... And, and speaking of that, I was gonna say, if for a while I thought, where did comics go? But they've never gone anywhere. Comics have always been here, mm -hmm. and they've been expanding and growing, and it's not a genre, it's a... It's a medium. It's a medium. That's right. Good, thanks for saying that. It's really important. Comics are, yeah, different than books, and they're different than film, and they're not storyboards. They're totally cool juxtaposed words and images working together in a really neat way. So, yeah, there's nothing yeah. to me more boring than a book that's 500 pages and it doesn't have any pictures a, in it. What a rip. I know. Can I get some pictures in here? Yeah, whereas a comic yeah. book, it just <laughs> illustrates the whole story and helps you, your imagination to just go in all kinds of different directions. So, yeah. And, and comics yeah. are more than Marvel and DC, right? They go so much more. Oh, yeah, there's, yeah. there's comic book artists and comic book authors from around the world. For sure, yeah, there's probably, you know, 100 active publishers in the United States and in other countries like Japan. Manga, which is the name for comic books in Japan, is so prolific. Um, everyone reads comics around the world. America reads less comics than the rest of the world. Uh, um, for some that. reason. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we gotta get our act together, yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of the vault aspect, I went down to the basement. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty like, good. There's enough comics. You could give everybody in the world a comic book down there. Yeah, no, we. I think we uh, just did the math on it and we're we're encroaching on uh, like 250,000 comic books in the store. So quarter of a million individual tiny comic books. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Now at my house, Wednesday is Prince Spaghetti Day. Okay. But here, <laughs> Wednesday is what, new comic book? Every single week, uh, new releases go right here. And uh, yeah, every single week without fail, new comic book day is Wednesday at all comic shops everywhere. Um, that's just the way it's always been. And you're right downtown Ann Arbor. How long have you been in Ann Arbor? The, since 96 is when we opened. So we've kind of bopped around town. We've been on Main Street for almost 20 years. Well, then you're doing something right. We're yeah. doing okay, yeah. And it says comic books and stuff. That's right. What's right the here. stuff part? So this is good, this is the catch-all. We do manga and we do board games and we do tchotchkes and toys and pins and stickers and t-shirts and statues and weird stuffed avocados. I was just gonna say, yeah, I yeah. saw that earlier, I'm taking that avocado home. Yeah, it's no, it's gorgeous. Yeah, we saw a lot of giant stuffed avocados, uh, strangely enough. So you've got locations in Ann Arbor, Grand Rapids, and Detroit. That's true, yeah. Uh, 96 in Ann Arbor and then we went to Grand Rapids in 20, 13, so we've been out there almost 11 years, and then Detroit in 2016. Wow. Uh, so almost, yeah, nine or whatever years on in Detroit. So yeah, long time, and yeah, those, those shops are doing good, and um, yeah, it's exciting. It's weird that we can have a couple stores. No more, though. I, my dream initially was to just survive, and then we got a couple stores, and we're like, oh, we'll open stores, we'll be a big, giant, the borders of comics or something crazy, and then we realized that uh, it's very hard to run three businesses, so that's a lot. I, I, I love your passion. You can, I can tell you love what you do. Big time. You're, you're, you're great at it, mm -hmm. and you're helping turn Thank the you. whole world on to something that, I mean, everybody should read comics. I think so. I think so. Everybody should read, period, but why cheat yourself with just words? You know, throw some pictures in there. Right. It's, you, know, you get art and great writing, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, don't cheat yourself, treat yourself, as, as somebody once said. <laughs> Well, with talk time terminated, it was time for Tommy to wind up my imagination and let her go. And not only did I find comic books that were a huge part of my past, I also discovered new ones that will be a frequent part of my future. If you're a current connoisseur of comic books, or like me, want to pick it back up where I left off, Vault of Midnight in Ann Arbor has the combination to your imagination. So whether you travel through time, space, or just a normal car like the rest of us Earthlings, check this place out real soon. Well, next up, we're gonna feature a restaurant here in Ann Arbor that's a real hidden gem. Well, it was a hidden gem until now. Surprise. Welcome to Parado, where you'll find fantastic Vietnamese-inspired cuisine and classic signature cocktails all in a mind-blowing artistic atmosphere. 
To say this place has a cool vibe is a tremendous understatement because the ambiance here is over the top awesome. But before I partake in some of my new soon to be favorite flavor profiles, I thought it best to delve into a bit of the backstory. So I spent some table time front of the house with Chef Duke Tang. Just give me a little bit of sense of the journey that you took to get here. I mean, I, it was planetary, wasn't it? Well, Perido is definitely the latest chapter in a, in a long journey. Most of that uh, culinary journey uh, revolves around Pacific Rim, the restaurant uh, I, I run and own next door to Perido, and that's been around for 24 years. I was asked by a friend to help start that in 2000, uh, having um, going into with zero culinary experience, no culinary education, never worked at a restaurant before. In fact, my undergraduate degree was in biochemistry. <laughs> and I, my, I have a graduate degree in theology. A friend asked me to come to Ann Arbor to help him start Pacific Rim. And I told him, just I'll do it for two years, then maybe uh, look up medical school after that. And as soon as I started cooking, I just fell in love with it. And it, I found that it just really fits me really well. And from there, it's just a journey of exploration, of experimentation, of getting back to my roots, uh, calling my mom a lot, asking for recipes, and just trying to recreate all the food I grew up eating. My journey, culinary journey, started way back uh, from Vietnam, that's where I was born. We, uh, my family fled the country after the war. We were one of the boat refugees, lived in uh, refugee camps in Hong Kong and in the Philippines. So I got exposed to other Asian cuisines through that journey and then landed in California and I grew up in California, which is a melting pot of various different Asian cuisines, uh, Asian uh, uh, cultures as well. You've been on quite a journey in your life and to end up here with these two amazing restaurants in an amazing town. And Ann Arbor is such a transient town, so you're always having to reinvent yourself. You always there's always new people um, coming and going, so uh, you always have to, you can't just rest on that, you, you always have to draw in new people. And, and Perido is, um, I mean, over the years, 24 years running Pacific Rim, I've had many opportunities to open other restaurants, open second one or what a different location, but I've always kind of said no to it because it just wasn't right. It didn't feel right. Um, you really have to believe in it and you have to commit. I didn't want to do anything half-hearted. Uh, when the opportunity to come, uh, came to open Perro, um, I, I, I said yes, probably because it was right next door and I wouldn't have, I wanted to be present. When anything I did, I wanted to be hands-on. If I were somewhere else, you can't be at two places at once, but being next door, you kind of can. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then also uh, the team of people involved, um, Adam, Justin, Robbie, GC, um, all the guys, uh, Andrew, all the guys uh, that are part of this community that run uh, businesses around town, Last Word, Ali Bar, Good Time Charlie, um, they wanted to team up to open something special here and, you know, because of that relationship, um, I, you know, I said, this is, you yeah, know, this is the right fit. And that's uh, ultimately the most satisfying thing about the job is walking through the dining room and watching people really enjoy not just the food but enjoy the company enjoy each other their relationships if, if food is a vehicle to bridge gaps and to draw people in to relationships to then I, i'm happy if it can achieve that you're a very profound person anybody <laughs> ever tell you that well I, uh, for me cooking um, and running a restaurant is very philosophical not not just practical you have to really believe in what you're doing and believe in um, why you're doing it and, and for me it's about drawing people in about relationships about community creating community and food can can be a great vehicle to create community and community can be just the people around one table but it can be the wider community Ann Arbor downtown I live just down the street so what I love about um, working in and that's why i've been able to do it for 24 years is the uh in ann arbor it's so small that uh, i'm able to integrate family life work life uh community life downtown being part of the downtown community and just uh, i have five kids so when they were young they used to just walk downtown all the time and come and hang out at the restaurant and have 
meals together and I would go home and take them on bike rides around town and stop in to the restaurant. So it's just that whole integration is, is what's really appealing about being in Ann Arbor. Well, even though I was never really the coolest guy in school, just being here at Perido made me feel like I was somebody. Somebody who was about to enjoy a fabulous meal, that is. And everything we tasted was creative, complex, and completely crave-worthy. It was a transcendent treat for every single one of our taste buds. If creative cuisine in cool confines is something you find completely captivating, come please your palate at Perido. It's an absolute gastronomic gem you'll be glad you discovered. Oh, and speaking of discovering stuff, come explore all there is to eat, see, and do in and around Ann Arbor. It's a part of our great state that helps make Michigan the best place in the world to be. Mic drop. A visit to the Stalls Auto Collection will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. A fantastic assortment of gas pumps, neon signs, and automated music machines dating back 150 years that must be seen and heard. Info at stallsauto.com. 